It's no secret that James Corden is a massive see you next Tuesday or for sure. Hello. But the question still remains, why? How could such a lovable and seemingly humble character become one of the most hated celebs on the internet? Is it That actually is an easy question to answer. You see, James Corbin was never really humble or nice. And most people in actuality are not really nice. And that may include you, my dear viewer. Most people are just flat out not nice. Being nice is just one of the oldest self-defense mechanisms we as a human society have. You see, most people who are nice are just doing it because they lack power. And that may be literal physical power, uh, social standings, or political power even. It's be it's some kind of power that the person lacks and they feel the need to defend themselves. And most people can't defend themselves in any other way than by being nice. Because the trick here is, in psychology, it is really hard to be a dick to someone who is intentionally being nice against you unless you are a sociopath. Sure, you can be a dick against them one time or whatnot, but if that person continues to be nice and humble towards you, you're gonna feel awful for being a dick towards them, and you're gonna stop. So essentially, it's just a defense mechanism that people use. And the moment people acquired this power that they lacked, or the authority that they wish they wanted, or anything along these lines, they no longer need to be nice. Because they have the power to substitute that niceness. And this is exactly what happened to James Corden. Now, the fun thing about this, this is the fact that the switch slowly happens, but it happens instantaneously. The moment they get this power, they slowly will turn to their actual inside rotten, outside rotten selves. And it's gonna show. Because, you know, they feel untouchable, they feel that they can do nothing wrong, they feel, you know, they feel just being higher than everyone else. Uh, fun fact, this is something that you can see often on people who suddenly have acquired a lot of money. They will initially not spend that money frequently. They will be almost afraid to spend that money. They will have the money, but they will spend it extremely slowly. Until the point where they are used to it and they start spending it like normal, uh, like, you know, any normal millionaire would have. And they have this lifestyle. It's just the fact that people do not instantaneously recognize that they have this power, that they have this wealth, that they can actually use it and spend it however they want. So, they keep to their facade of being nice. So, yeah. Uh, that's usually why people are being nice, and that's pretty honestly much how, in psychological terms, it happened to James Corden. Is it his insufferably fake persona? The fact that he's seemingly everywhere- And yes, obviously your persona is gonna uh, seem extremely fake. All because he started a fight with Patrick Stewart. Oh Wait, shit, that was bad. No, seriously, go on. And I- And this- this situation is golden. You can see Patrick Stewart, he's kind of uncomfortable, he doesn't want to look at him. But you can see James Corbin just crossing his arms and shrinking himself as much as humanly possible to avoid... He's technically trying to avoid being seen, avoid avoiding being noticed, while being in his face and being noticed by everyone. This is just... This is just absolute uh, peak... A loss of self-control. Well, not loss of self-control, but this is just peak arrogance. Okay, no, um, go on. You can see my belly, and we can all see you dying right now. Let's go for it. Ow. What a dick. But, but, but I, I would pay to see what a twat. Yeah. Hey guys, it's Wicked here. And growing up in the UK, it wasn't all too uncommon to sit in front of the TV while enjoying a home-cooked microwave meal with the family. Between the year 2007 and 2010, the popular TV show Gavin and Stacey quickly became one of the UK's favourite comedy series. You had Gav from Essex, a place well known for its sunbeds, Stacey from Wales, a place well known for their fond hate of the English and their constant yeah. jokes about sheep sh 
There's all now that I I think the whole of England is very well known for sheep fucking. So I don't know what you're on about there, chief. So Nessa, Stacy's closest friend, a hardcore chick with an attitude, and of course Gav's best friend, Smithy. Believe it or not, this show was written by James Corden and one of his fellow co-stars, Ruth Jones, from the well-received show, Fat Friends. Gavin and Stacy was friends. such a massive hit, and Smithy quickly became the nation's favorite character in the show. I mean, who doesn't remember the iconic Indian curry scene? Later on, James Corden became the host of another absolute banger of a show known as A League of Their Own, a British sports-based comedy panel game where James Corden, in all fairness, demonstrated quality banter and a seemingly relatable down-to-earth character. It's safe to say that at this point in his- I like how he's just saying seemingly relatable, because it's true. His personality was 100% fake all the time. Insane. His career, the general public was in favor of James, but it wasn't until later where that all changed. Later down the line, James Corden eventually succeeded Craig Ferguson as the host of the American late night talk show called The Late Late Show. This you could actually make an argument that America obviously destroys everything and they destroyed him, but now nah, that's not true. But America does destroy everything, so you know, that part is true. This is where we would see James interview other celebrities and feature his popular carpool karaoke. But on the 20th of May 2019, James Corden made a massive mistake. I'm pretty sure that call carpool karaoke was the most uh, biggest thing that he was known for. It was absolutely huge on YouTube. So many people watched it and so many people loved it. Take. A post from the Late Late Show on the popular subreddit r slash IAMA gave Reddit users the opportunity to ask James Corden anything, which is about as successful as my sex life. No, Somebody's honking at me from that comment as well. Hey James, you won't remember me, but me and my friends sat at a table next to you and Harry Styles. And some others in the Maturian Legends in London's Chinatown about six years ago. We didn't bother you, but you were a massively entitled <laughs> who yelled and treated the waitstaff like and when one of my party politely suggested that you'd calm down, you got really aggressive and threatening in a chubby way. Bruh, you do... If you want to see the tr uh, the true personality of these nice people, you just uh, you just need to confront them when they think they are in poverty, you know, when they think they can control the situation. They will break down instantaneously. Like a boozy panda. So my question is this, why did Harry seem so cool while you are such a massive throbbing bellend? Have you ever considered being funny or likable? He's gonna need some aloe vera for that burn. James Corden allegedly showed up for a WGA union meeting for late night writers with an executive producer and none of the writing staff. Before hearing out any of the actual late night writers, James of course was the first to speak when in the meeting, at which point he advocated for less pay for new writers with the supposed justification being that it was so he could afford to hire writing assistants. Pres Wait, what? That's that's so messed up and stupid at the same time. Uh, wow. Presumably on less pay as well. This is my favorite one. Massive in person, I saw a league of their own filming live. He threw multiple tantrums over minor things at the production staff, with him being incredibly rude to them, which made the other regulars seem very awkward like it was usual. Between each take, other celebs would be chatting amongst themselves, bantering about, while James was glued to his phone. At the end of filming, people got up to get pictures with James Corden, and he massively kicked off, shouting at people to go away and go back to their seats, and the few that he did let have pictures with him, he was moving ads it gets better yep be once a dick always a dick it's the only mi miracle honestly about james corden is the fact that he managed to hide this so well from the a vast majority of public for such an extended period of time that is the only thing that's honestly surprising Afterwards, we went into the VIP tent as such for a beer, and the celebs were going to be joining us. The other celebs came in and spoke with people. James came out for a brief moment. Someone politely asked for a quick picture, and he abruptly said later, and then f***ed off to, I'm guessing, his changing room for the rest of the night, as they didn't get their picture before kick-out time. Nice. Seeing him like that made me realize everything you see on TV is a complete persona, and really, his natural personality is just a complete self-entitled.
But where did it all go wrong? In 2020... Man, if there's one thing you can tell from this video, it's the fact that the British really love to use the word cunt. Multiple articles came out saying that James self-admittedly sought out therapy to combat his brattish behavior, saying that his friends and family have even- That's obviously- well, that's not fake, he probably went to like one session or something, but uh, obviously PR stunts. ...notice this and say that he needs to get some help. From this article it says, Corden, 41, revealed to the New Yorker that his friends and family began to take exception to his increasingly spoiled behavior after the success of, you guessed it, Gavin and Stacey. Yep, get success, get famous, get recognition, and that's it. And by the way, pe as you can see, people legitimately just succumb to his behavior because he got the power. What can they do? They have no ones. He's a famous celebrity loved by a whole country. Admittedly, the country of England is barely a country at this point, and even prior it was kind of trash. But still, you know, he has the power. Those people can't do anything but be nice to him. A.K.A. now they're being nice to him because they don't have any more power over him because he's the famous one. You see how this always happens. Being nice is such a facade in so ma in almost every situation, honestly. I have found it that it is so hard and almost nigh on impossible to find actually someone legitimately nice in real life who actually holds power. Like, it's so rare. Stacy. He says, I started to behave like a brat that I just don't think I am. It's so intoxicating, that first flush of fame. And I think it's even more intoxicating if you're not bred for it. His Gavin and Stacey co-star Rob Brydon also approached him about his attitude. With Brydon saying, I said, look, this is a bit awkward to say, but I'm just hearing these things about you and you've got to know that the way you behave has an effect on people. A very true statement from Rob Brydon. Uh, the effect is that people around him feel miserable and can't do anything about it. Right there. So it's clear that fame got to his head and apparently this is the reason for his actions. But fame, like any intoxicating drug, can break down barriers and reveal dark truths about your true personality. In a paper on being a celebrity... A f By the way, I called these people like uh, James Corden. Uh, failed sociopaths, you know? They were not, they were not good enough to be become a self-made sociopath, so they failed to hide themselves long enough. They're, they're kind of honestly low on the on the totem pole of successors. Phenomenology of Fame by Donna Rockwell. The study conducted interviews with 15 well-known American celebrities from government to law to business to publishing, sports, music, film, television, news, and entertainment and oh, found wow. that fame was genuinely experienced as a progression throughout four phases a period of love or hate towards the experience and mm, yes everyone who ex experiences fame sees this this is an interesting take maybe i should read that addiction phase where the behavior is directed solely towards the goal of remaining famous yes an acceptance phase requiring a permanent change in everyday life routines and finally an adaption phase where new behaviors are developed in response to life changes in okay yeah this oh, oh i understand this study there's no re reason to read this study it didn't actually dive into psychology of how people behave it just uh it just well uh, sought out what they do and how they change uh, change their lives accordingly essentially it was just the overall factors of what the person does differently once they uh once they start to become famous and yeah this seems reasonable involved in being famous. James Corden, of course, experienced this progression himself. At first, the experience of becoming famous provides a lot of ego stroking where newly famous people find themselves warmly embraced. One participant states, it changes my whole persona and the way of being when I'm out in public. When I'm walking into the building, into my office, people are like, oh my God, there's Patty. I used to want to turn and wave and say hi, but now sometimes it gets too much and intrusive. I've had guys coming up to me while I was using the rest. Oh yeah, that's actually true. Uh, there are legitimate celebrities that are kind of okay and they, you know, their egos are not overinflated. 
and they will sometimes burst out because it's kind of true. If you're like a super well-known celebrity, you know, you walk down the street and there's like three different people trying to get a photo with you and shit like that. So it's very intrusive and people, well, you know, may break down because of it, even though if they're actually like, you know, a more normal people, not absolute assholes. You know, it does get the people. Room, standing there, wanting to shake my hand, saying things like, could you wait a minute? Could you please wait? It's just crudeness and completely impolite. They go into... Uh, then again, when you can actually be nice 24-7 towards every fan, like, look at Keanu Reeves. Look at goddamn Keanu Reeves. That guy is one of the most beloved people in the whole of the world because there's absolutely no one who can say anything bad about him because he's always nice. You never hear a story about, well, I went up to Keanu Reeves, asked for a photo, and he fucking spit in my face. You know, I would have paid extra for that, but, you know, that's just me. You know, you don't hear stories about, uh, about that, like, uh, about people like Keanu Reeves. Who are constantly nice. I can't even tell honestly if Keanu Reeves is faking it. I think everyone who fakes it uh, loses at some point. But I have never heard that, for example, Keanu Reeves does something like that. And people absolutely love him. He's a natural... Uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a treasure. He's a worldly, worldly treasure. And the good part is most likely also a vampire. So he's gonna be around for a pretty long time. To say this, you try to put fame in its place because otherwise it will swallow up everything else. It will be totally out of control, it could destroy everything you have, or it could make you into a monster. Just like, I guess, James Corden around his fans. We've all heard and seen people who believe that they are better or bigger or more important than the person next to them. There are famous people who believe, like, quote, Do you know who I am? <laughs> you are treating me this way, and do you know who I am? Dude, those people are obnoxious. I think the moment uh, something like that is known to the public that you literally told someone, Do you know who I am? It's over for you. I think that's just insta over. But what does this all mean for James? Well, I can't say for certain, but it's clearly obvious that everyone reacts to fame in different ways, but there can be an enormous impact on the individual's personality. However, for James, this is no excuse for him to be an absolute art. God, look at that. He doesn't have a double chin. He has a omega quadruple fuffle chin, man. Like, look at this. It's like a separate organism. Asshole. But at least now we can say that it did start from when he got famous. Otherwise, his friends and family wouldn't try and push him into therapy to stop being a brat he would have known his place back before he got famous and now all the barriers are down and he's become the center of attention the darker side has come out now oh. to add to that point of course don't really know too much about james corden pre-fame so he could have just been a genuine arsehole at the time and fame just enhanced i don't hear too much echo from this strange that however all of this isn't purely the reason why so many people despise james corden no. If you do a quick Google search about why people hate James Corden, or even just read the comment... <laughs> you know you made it when there's a top five reasons people hate... <laughs> oh, uh, that's just the that's just level of success, my dude. Ah, oh, compare it to like a crown. Corden, or even just read the comments on commentary videos about him, you'll notice that there are a lot of people who just can't bear him in general. Even on the Reddit that I was reading comments from, there are people that just genuinely dis- Uh, hi James, his have you man managed to make this far? I'll be honest, I'm not a fan. Hey James, why are, you, uh, why are you classed as a comedian when you're not funny? Why does it take so many of you to uh, make such a piece of shit? It's like the guy, purely just for his TV presence. They have a distaste for his professional work, and if you've seen Cats, which Ugh. I do not recommend in the slightest, me, you can see why. Not to mention Cinderella's come out, 500 likes, and I sh you not, I will watch through the whole thing and make a video about it. Look, I would like to assume that James Corden wasn't always like this, but deep down his temperament and pre-fame personality just wasn't equipped for this life-changing experience. It's clear from the fact that his friends and family called him out on this, along with the rest Moral of the story, never trust, uh, trust a fat person 
who is uh, always nice. Response from the internet, that he's really not a nice guy. Oh, I saw, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean person. Yeah, fat people are not people. ...to be around. But regardless of how irritating he is on TV, I doubt many people would care as much if he just didn't act the way he did. This was how James Corden went from a lovable Brit to an intolerable brat. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like the video if you liked it and let me know. Yep, like and subscribe, boys. That's pretty much it. I actually watched James Corden and Camille Sabellos Cinderella. Oh, that's a mistake, dude. That that's definitely a mistake. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's it. Like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.